Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is part 2 of the SDM32 custom bootloader series, and it continues directly from the previous video. In part 1 of this series, we learn how to create two separate projects, one for the bootloader and one for the application. We also discussed how to divide the available flash memory between these two projects, and how the bootloader performs a jump to the application after startup. In today's video, we will implement the bootloader validation logic. In simple terms, the bootloader will first check some data stored in the application header. Based on this check, it will decide whether it should jump to the application or not. This becomes very important when the application is flashed by the bootloader and something goes wrong during the update process, which can corrupt the application. With this validation logic in place, the bootloader can decide whether the application is valid and safe to run, or invalid and should be rejected. If the application is found to be invalid, the bootloader will remain active and wait for a new firmware update instead of jumping to a faulty application that could cause unexpected behavior. This validation logic is divided into two parts. In today's video, we will implement a basic validation method, where the bootloader checks a magic number stored in the application header. This magic number will stay the same across all application versions, and it will act as a unique identifier for the application. In the next video, we will move on to a stricter validation method. In that part, the bootloader will verify the application size and CRC, along with this magic number. I will continue working on the same project that we used in the previous video. So make sure you have watched part 1 of this series before proceeding with this part 2. Now, let's start by looking at the bootloader again. Create a new header file named appheader.h. In this file, we will define a structure that represents the application header. This structure will contain the following elements which will be used by the bootloader to validate the application. The OTA flag will be set by the application after it successfully receives the OTA firmware from the server. This flag informs the bootloader that a new OTA image has been downloaded, and that the bootloader can proceed with flashing it. The magic number is the value we discussed earlier. This number will always remain constant for the application and will be used as an identifier. The size field represents the application size in bytes, and the CRC field represents the CRC value of the application. These values will be calculated by the bootloader, and after flashing the application, the bootloader will update them in the application header. The version field stores the application version number. For today's video, we will focus only on the magic number and ignore the other fields for now. Next. Inside the bljump.c file, we will implement an additional check for the magic number. The function bootloader is app valid, will be responsible for checking whether the application is valid or not. In this function, the bootloader will first read the application header structure stored at the app header start address. After reading the header, it will verify the magic number stored inside the structure. If the magic number does not match the expected constant value, the function will return an error. The next check performed by the bootloader is the reset handler address check. This reset handler address must lie within the application flash region. If it falls outside this range, the function will return another error. If both these checks are completed successfully, the function will return zero, indicating that the application is valid. We need to define this constant magic number inside this file so the bootloader can compare against it. The same magic number value must also be written by the application inside its application header structure. We will also declare this validation function inside the bljump.h file. Now, inside the main function, the bootloader will call this application validation function. If the function does not return zero, the bootloader will print a log message to the console and blink the red LED to indicate a jump failure. Let's build the bootloader project now. 
Everything looks good here, and the bootloader binary file has been generated successfully, so let's move on to the application part. First of all, copy the app header.h file into the application project as well. The same header structure will be used by the application, so we can reuse the same file without making any changes. Now, inside the application main file, include the app header.h file at the top. Next, we need to store the magic number inside the application header structure. Since the magic number is a constant value, we do not need to perform any flash write operations to store it. Instead, we can use the section attribute to place this data directly at the required memory location. For now, I have kept all the fields set to zero, except for the magic number. This magic number is the same value that we defined earlier in the bootloader. Now we need to define this new section inside the linker flash script. First, define the app header memory region with the origin address set to 4000 and a length of 1 kilobyte. We have already discussed this memory layout in detail in the previous video. Next, define the header section and place it inside the app header region that we just created. While defining this section, make sure to use the keep attribute. This is very important because the application header lies outside the normal application flash region, and without the keep keyword, the linker may remove this section during optimization, assuming it is unused. Once the project is built, you should be able to see the app header section listed in the memory regions. You will notice that it occupies a total of 20 bytes in flash memory. You can also verify this by checking the data structure in the memory details tab. Now both the bootloader and the application are ready, so let's open STM32 cube programmer and flash them one by one. First, connect the SD link to the cube programmer. I will flash the application binary file first. Make sure to provide the correct flash address for the application and then start the programming process. The application has been flashed successfully, so let's flash the bootloader next. The bootloader flash address is the start of the flash memory. Alright, the bootloader is also flashed now. Let's disconnect the programmer and reboot the board. The log shows that the bootloader has executed, but it was not able to make the jump to the application. You can also see that the red LED on the STM32F103 is blinking, which clearly indicates a bootloader jump error. So the question is, what went wrong here? All the code was programmed correctly, and the flashing process completed without any errors. The only possible issue left is the way the application stored the magic number inside the application header section. To investigate this, let's connect the SD link back to the cube programmer. Go to the memory and file editing section, and first read the bootloader address. The bootloader memory looks correct and intact, so there is no issue on that side. Now let's move on and check the application address. As you can see, the application memory is filled with zeros, and at an offset of 4 bytes, we can see the magic number stored. What actually happened here is that the application header data was placed inside the main application region. If you now check the actual application header address, you will notice that there is no data there at all. That entire memory region is erased. This happens because a bin file does not contain any address information. A bin file is just a raw stream of bytes without any knowledge of memory layout. When the programmer flashes a bin file, it simply writes the data sequentially starting from the flash address that we provide. As a result, all sections, such as the application header and the application code, get merged together into one continuous block. In our case, the magic number ended up inside the application region, while the actual application header address remained empty. This is exactly why the bootloader validation failed, and the jump to the application never happened. We can fix this issue by flashing the application ELF or hex file instead of the bin file. I have not generated the hex file here, so I will flash the ELF file directly. 
The file has been flashed successfully, and now if we check the application address again, we can see the correct data placed in the application region. Let's disconnect the SD link from the cube programmer and reboot the board once more. You can now see that the bootloader is able to jump to the application without any issues. The blinking green LED confirms that the jump was successful and the application is running as expected. Later in this project, we will implement a method to convert only the application portion into a binary file, while removing the header-related data. With this approach, the bootloader will be able to directly flash the updated binary file starting from the application flash address. So at this point, we have successfully implemented a bootloader validation logic, where the bootloader checks for a constant magic number stored inside the app header structure. If any mismatch is detected, the bootloader simply decides not to jump to the application. In the next video, we will make this validation even stricter by checking the application size and CRC as well. That's it for this video. You can download the complete project from the link provided in the video description. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any doubts. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.